In the last video, I talked about how to create an array and how to use a for loop to print the numbers out in that array. In this video, I'm going to talk about a second method you can use to create an array. So to review from last time, to create an array, I state what type of uh, number is going to be in the array or string. And I say int here with the brackets. And the curly braces were used to denote the beginning and end of the array. The second method looks very similar. I have an int with brackets, so it's an array or a carton. I'm going to call it random numbers because in this video I'm going to fill it with random numbers. So I'm going to test that math.random uh, function out. And then I use this word new, int, and 100. So this means I'm going to create a new array. It's actually going to go to RAM and carve out some memory for me to use. And this one's going to hold 100 elements, 0 through 99. Okay, so this is a second way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, an array of random numbers. So what I'll do is, the easiest way to do this is to use a for loop. So I'm going to go through every element, 0 through 99, and put in a random number. So here we go, let's try it. 4, and I'll say index, int, index, equals 0, index, less than. Now this is an array, so an array knows how long it is. So I'll say random numbers dot length, index plus plus. And four, we always come at the end of a for loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a random number in the array. So I'm going to say random number index equals math dot random. Now remember, this gives me a number between zero and 0 0.99. So I'm going to scale it up or multiply by 100, so I can get numbers up to 0 through 99. And then one thing I need to do is turn it into an integer by using the word int in front. This is a cast. I can cast it into uh, an integer. I guess it comes from the old fashioned casting of iron. When you hit a piece of iron with cat with an, with an iron, you cast it into something. We're going to cast this double because math.random returns in double, we're going to cast it to an integer, or basically lop off the decimal point. So this says, give me a random number, and put it in the zeroth element. Then we increment the index by one, get me another random number, and stick it in the first element, second element, third element. So this basically fills up the array, and then I'm going to use a second for loop. I'll just be smart here, and I'll cut and paste this. And I'm going to just print out like I did in the previous video, system dot out dot print line uh, random number index. So the f the first for loop fills in the array with random numbers zero through ninety nine, and the second one prints out the numbers. So let's compile it. See if I have any errors. Uh, random numbers, I'm missing an S here, random numbers, because there's an S right here, I didn't have that right there, compile, and random numbers, again, there's an S, compile, and probably the same thing, yeah, S, so compile, we're good, and then I'm going to run it. And so you can see here, now that's not all 100 because the screen scrolls, but I get random numbers between 0 and you never see anything higher than 99. Okay, I can go back in here and change it around a little bit. Let's say I want 0 through 10. I'll put 11. So remember, it's always one more. Compile. And then run it. And there you go. So, in this video, uh, I showed a second method to create an array. If you know what's going to be in the array from the get-go, you, you can just put them in using the curly braces. If you don't know, which is actually happens more often than not, you can create an array using this method, method 2. And I use two for loops, one for loop to put numbers in the array, and then one to print it out. And just to review, math.random returns a number between 0 and 0 0.99, a double or real number. I can scale it 
or basically make it bigger or smaller, by multiplying by a number and then casting it into an it or lop off the decimal point, put it in the array, and then use the a second for loop to uh, print it out. One other thing here I want to show you. Notice I use the word index here, and I use it here. Basically, when you have a set of curly braces, this variable only lives for the duration of the curly braces. So when this curly brace, when we finish this for loop and we get to this curly brace, this variable dies, and so I'm, I'll, I'm able to use it again because it's it's a new one. Even though it looks like the same one, it's a completely new one. In memory, this one goes away, and then it's recreated here again. So there's our second tutorial on arrays and for loops.